All right, I'm here with Murphy, and this is Ollie. And in this video, we're gonna go over how you, uh, tips and tricks if you have a dog that resource guards, which he might do a little bit of. Now, um, one of the times we do this is really, uh, and I'm not gonna give the treat, I'm just gonna let him sniff it. If you give a dog a treat when it's barking, it's gonna bark more. He's just barking, he wants attention. I'm just doing this to stop the barking. All right, so basically, if you have a dog that resource guards, as men, what, typically what we think is we see the dog resource guarding, we're like, well, I'm gonna take that away from you. If you're gonna act that way, then you're gonna lose it. The reason dogs resource guard is they are afraid you are going to take their stuff. So the absolute worst thing you do is physically take it away from the dog, you're gonna make it worse. What we wanna do is we wanna create a positive association so the dog sees the arrival of the person or the dog as a good thing. Now, right now we have a little uh, child in the house and the child is now starting to crawl around and that's why he's having a little bit of a problem. Now he is like this way for food as well as for some items, some toy items. And a dog can uh, guard really a noun, a person, place, or a thing. And so what we wanna do is we wanna create a positive association instead of actually sit, sit. Instead of actually uh, uh, punishing the dog or validating its perceptions by taking it away, we want the dog to actually think of it as a good thing. Now I'm gonna pantomime a little bit because we don't have the ability to recreate it here, but I don't need to see it in order to treat it. Now let's say we're gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna use this post here to represent uh, Murphy. And so basically, um, let's say that I'm approaching Murphy and that Murphy is at the base of that post and he has a bone or something like that. So I'm gonna approach him, whoever the, uh, the person is. Now in this case, it's, it's your daughter, correct? So what we're gonna do is, it'll be a little bit more challenging, but I'm sure if you put your daughter down, she's gonna go straight towards him, right? So you're gonna put your daughter down and you're gonna take note and you're gonna be kind of getting ready to grab her. And so she's gonna crawl towards him. You're gonna watch the dog. And what you're gonna look for is the warning. Now, most of us wait until the dog is reacting, and that's way, way, way too far. So the first warning I found is usually the dog sound like this. Dogs are normally wiggly and jiggly. All of a sudden, the dog will go like from this to... So they stiffen up, they freeze, and they stare. So that's usually the first sign. Now, they can do other things as well. They could, uh, the tail could go up. They could stop breathing. They can breathe really fast. They can look directly at it. They can look away from it. Their ear sometimes comes forward or go back. Uh, every dog's gonna have a little bit different mannerisms of how to do it, but I found that universal, the first one is usually a freeze and look and, or a stare. So let's say I'm approaching this and I get to here and that's when I see the freeze. I wanna stop at this distance, or in this case, we're gonna pick up the child at this distance, but we're gonna take note. Let's say this is 10 feet away. So we're in, okay, I'm at 10 feet, so I'm gonna pick up the child. We're gonna walk away and let the dog relax. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put the baby down and I have a treat as we're watching. So let's say that where this leaf is right here is the 10 foot mark. So we'll put it in a way that you guys can see it. There we go. So when we get to this point, I'm gonna stop. Murph. So what I'm gonna do is if this is the point where the dog gets freezed or freezes, I'm gonna stop about a foot outside of it. When the dog's looking, I'm gonna throw a treat right at it. Then I'm gonna pick up the baby and we're gonna walk away. So now what we're saying is when the baby comes, the baby is the precedent. The baby's arrival means that treats fall from the sky. But then we pick up the baby and then we walk away. Now the next time I might wanna angle, come from this angle, next time from this angle, next time from that angle. So you, ideally you wanna approach it from all sorts of different angles, but we're stopping at 10 feet in the, or 11 feet or whatever the distance is at the circle. Once I've gone all the way around and the dog seems to be pretty relaxed, then at that point I might go to 10 feet or let the baby go to 10 feet and then throw the treat and then pick up the baby, go back and then angle this way, this way, this way. So this might take several practice sessions. This is usually not something that happens in one sitting. So this might take several times. Uh, a lot of times we look at this when the dog guards like this as, darn, the dog is guarding and we get frustrated. I have a friend named Stefan who's in a wheelchair. Stefan was one of the most athletic person that I knew. He's from Vail, he skied, he mountain biked, surfed, hiked, everything. And I used to be a concert promoter and he ended up putting breaking his neck at a concert. And after that, um, a couple of years later, we were in Vegas and I was pushing him up a hill and I was cursing in his chair, like, I hate this thing. He goes, I love this thing. I'm like, how could you say that, man? You're the most athletic guy. He goes, this chair liberates me. This chair, because of this chair, I get to go out in Vegas. If this chair wasn't here, I'd be in Santa Monica or Santa Barbara, where it is, in a hospital room and you wouldn't be here with me. And there's a, a powerful concept of changing your perceptions from have to to get to, I have to go to work, I get to go to work. I have to be in this chair, I get to be in this chair. 
And if he can do that with a wheelchair, we can do it the same way. So when you see your dog getting in one of these frames of mind, the whole point of this is don't say, oh, he's in that form. Sweet! I get to help him get better at his resource guarding. And grab yourself 10 or 15 treats and start having the baby do this. And uh, after, and if you have to, you can put something down as the baby crawls towards, but usually your dogs are so cute, I'm sure they're probably just going straight towards it. So, and do this in different places. Dogs do not generalize well. So if you only do it here, dog might not resource guard here, but it might resource guard over there. So if, if possible, try to, and it happens in different areas, look at that as an opportunity. And eventually you want to get to the point where you're just, your baby's right here, and then you're dropping the treat, and then you turn around and walk away. Um, as your baby gets older, eventually you can have your baby hold out the treat. But the last thing we want to do is, like I said, if the dog reacts, we push too far. The whole point of this exercise is there's no reactivity whatsoever. Also, whenever you practice this or any other dog uh, behavior or training exercise, you always want to end on a good note. The freshest memory m -gram they're going to have is of the last thing that happened. So you push too far and you get greedy and then the dog snaps. That's the last memory, the most fresh memory the dog's gonna have and that's the behavior that's gonna be more likely to occur the next time. So that's why we, we go very past, we stop at 11 feet, we roll the treat and we walk away. The whole time the dog is practicing not reacting. And eventually we get closer and closer and closer. When it comes to food, a lot of times what I do is the baby gets to a certain distance, I might have a thing of, not Alpo, but like a wet food in a long handled spoon and the baby gets to this point and I plop it down there. Then we pick the baby up. So now when the baby comes, she's not gonna take my food, better food arrives. Can we get the baby to come over here more and more often? And eventually the dog looks at it as a positive thing. Um, so if your dog resource guards, no punishment, don't get mad because it's not an intentional act, it's not doing it to piss you off. It's just a natu it's, uh, natural for dogs to guard things in the wild because they need them for survival. We don't need it to do it when they're de domesticated. So it's, there's no indication that it's not a uh, indicator of a poor training or household or anything. Some dogs just get it. The best thing to do is just treat it. All right, Ollie. This is Ollie, who is not the resource guarder, but I'm David, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that likes to resource guard a person, place, or thing.